powered by Virginia. Radio. What is going on, everybody? A Monty on the track here with another episode, man. It is a good one. You know why? Because like Dante said, we got the big three in the building today. I mean, y'all don't see loud behind the boards, but loud back there, too. We in here. What's good? What's good, everybody? Dante Devon on the show about time. You know what I'm saying? We be rocking. We be linking. We be talking. We be chilling. We be building. But we never got him on the show, and I thought about it. And I was like, dude, it's about time. Here we are. Dante Devon, what's good? Yo, yo, yo. What's good? Hey, Monty. Ain't shit. No, I'm just feeling good today. I don't know. I'm in a really good mood today. I just spent a good day, you know? So it's going to be a good show. Yes, sir. Dante, tell them about yourself. Who are you? What you do? Where What's you going from? on, man? It's your boy Dante Devon, man. From Dresden Drive. Um, I'm a storyteller artist. I am. I am. I can't agree with that statement 100%. You are a storyteller. Thank you. Thank you. I like that I was shit. saying I am. You be putting shit together. I get a that. A member. Power by Virginia, man. Loud facts. Top Loud member. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Top member. Loud facts. But yeah, though, man, like, I'm a musician, I'm an actor, I'm a, uh advisor, you know what I'm saying? I give you good advice and you need it, you know what I'm saying? Movies, bro. Oh, yeah, I was in the 95 web series joint, you know what I'm saying? Uh, about it. I ain't know this. Oh, yeah, so... Actually, I think I have seen something about you, you was acting in something, I think you posted something. That yeah, you yeah, I was like a uh, drug dealer in that joint. 95, shit. when did you do that? That was like a couple of years ago, um... So I linked up Vince Loyal. He linked those people from up top. Um, they needed two people to run uh, the state of Virginia uh, for the uh, web series. So um, he chose me and someone else. And um, so uh, that's how I got started. Shit was lit. And um, got my I was in episodes three, four, seven, and eight, like that. Um, and they won an award. For the first year, best new uh web series, and it was in the category with some shrill, real, real top names. So that's what's up. It was lit. Like, where was it? Where were you able to play? And can you still stream it? Oh yeah, yeah it's on YouTube right now. Oh, you got to check that shit out. I yeah. want to check it out. Check that out. Ninety five gonna... web series. Shout out to them people too, man. So y'all shot it around here? Yeah, all up down ninety five. Like we shot some of it is uh shot in. New Jersey, New York. Oh wow! Uh, here, in Virginia, and some in Florida. So they, they just me, hit all the states, touching the ninety-five. Could you tell me some of the cast members? Um, from from Virginia, they have um, damn, they had Philly the Six Man. That's what I was going against. They had Spaz DiCaprio. Wait, against what kind of show was this? Uh, like I said, it was like 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 money and violence type shit. No, I'm oh, it was like, like acting. Like, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm oh, really, really <laughs> acting and shit. Like, yeah. I'm like, hold up, hold up. Yeah, man. <laughs> hold up. Um, yeah, Av. What's, what's, what's up, chat? What's up, chat? What's up, Wesley? From from the uh cross across the water. Um. More from he from up he from up top. No, I'm saying that's good, dope. Good casting. Yeah, it's something I've always wanted to try was acting. Like I've never. Really, I mean, besides like a short skit in a music video or whatever, I've never really acted before, but it's always something I've had an interest in. Mm-hmm. I've always wanted to do, I want to try, I've always wanted to be a part of a, like a Hollywood production type of deal because it'd be fun. Like, I think it'd be fun. It'd be a lot of hard work, of course. I'm sure it, it takes a lot of preparation and, and exercise and all that to get ready for your role or whatever, but it'd be fun, man. I mean, yeah, it, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. It's also like, it's, it's not hard as long as you, you know what I'm saying, make it you. You know what I'm saying? Because that's basically like, like if you get hired for any acting role, they're basically saying that this is you. Like, outside of this, this is a kind of like you on the day. This is about so, to be, yeah, who you're known as. Yeah, so. yeah, it's who you're known as. So it's like, yeah. just bring that, you know what I'm saying? Take the script, read it. Like, like I know for like episode seven, I know we shot in front of the Hand and Coliseum for a scene right there. Um, normally they would send a script down. So we could learn like months before before they get here and film, but it was like they showed up that day and we had to learn the script that day. You know what I'm saying? Within like thirty minutes of filming, you know what I'm saying? So hey man, I read it. I bet I read it over, 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 made it. Kept fucking your lines up. 
No, no, no. We did like like I like had to fuck my lines up. Two takes. You know what I'm saying? Because so I just made it me. You know what I'm saying? I, I just read it. I said, I, I know how to. I know how the situation is. So I'm gonna say this. Homie gonna feed off me, and that's how I basically was. So it was like easy for real. I feel like I feel like also like I mean I've never been a part of a situation like this or any type of production, but I feel like if you were to improvise in a situation like a scene, maybe it might even like even not even kind of go by exactly the script but like go by the script but like kind of improvise in your own way and make it you you know what i'm saying i feel like that's what creates like the best actors because i've definitely seen a lot of like youtube montages of you know actors who created like who are, who improvised in a scene and they ended up keeping in and type of shit it's like i feel like that's what really sets aside like the better actors or the ones who can kind of come up with something on the spot that would really improve the character you know and like really like make the character pop out and stand out and like really give a name to that person or to that character and, and whatever it is that they're watching. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like, I mean, I, I, again, I've never been in a, in a production, so I don't know if you're able to really improvise the way you want, but I feel like the better actors probably. And yeah, I feel like yeah. actors, if it, it's an art and you should have that freedom to be able to improvise if you feel like it'll improve the scene. I mean, if it's something that's out of the box and doesn't make sense to the scene, no. But if it's something that'll help improve the scene, improvise. Yeah. yeah, but don't over improvise. Yeah, don't overdo it. Of course, don't yeah. Don't do but. it, but just just enough, like like where it's realistic. Like, ah, right, yeah, make you mind you with somebody. You know what I'm saying? Even if even if it ain't you, you know what I'm saying? At least make it relatable. You right. know what I'm saying? So that's what it's about. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah. So we're gonna get into the topics because we haven't even gotten into that. We already got into kind of good conversation. You know what I'm saying? Oh shoot, it's on. It's on the other phone. Shoot, I just I'm like uh, in this whole phone switching adjustment period. Oh, I didn't even go over like announcements and stuff. Okay, let me do that. Uh, so announcements, bam. So uh, I know July thirtieth is the softball game. Stop the violence softball game. Uh, make sure you guys are tapping into that. Hit up loud and uh, anybody who else is involved in that game if you are interested in going or getting tickets or whatever. Um, yeah, that's July thirtieth. Uh, Audible Heat Studio. I was there all day. Um, really great session today. Uh, dope artist came through. Um, we put his record together very well. Uh, I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. I mixed the hell out of his record. Confidently. You know, my boy Dwayne mastered it. And, you know, he did the final touch-ups and whatever. But I mixed the hell out of that boy's record today. I am very proud of the work that I did today. Um, me and Dwayne together, honestly. Uh, we both did very good work today. And um, having two producers in the room is... is it can be clashy, but it can be amazing at the same time because we we're both trying to point the artist in, in a certain direction, but like we both kind of had a little bit different directions, but our directions that were kind of going opposite ways kind of took a big curve and ended up kind of being the same. So, or not the same, but like folding into each other, you know what I mean? So it, it's just having two producers in the room is something that should be like artists need to understand just having one experienced engineer or producer in the room is a gift like is a true honor to, to and, and fucking take that if you got it Most definitely. but when you have two experienced really good producers engineers your song can't go wrong can't I'm, go wrong it can't go wrong i'm just being real but yeah we, we did a good and job. if it do so that's wrong. that's on the artist <laughs> I'm, I'm being honest that's just on the artist can't can't capitalize on the opportunity that's being real um but yeah audible heat if you want to book with them audibleheat.com um you can put my promo code in and that's a monty 10 all caps 10 all caps a monty 10 um and you can get 10 percent off your sessions and if you put my name in your thingy thingy i'll be at your session um uh there was the uh something else that i was uh it's on my thing hold on sorry guys i gotta go to my list Oh, the Fight Club. I still don't remember too much about it, but we have the Fight Club and we have things going on in August 27th, 23rd, something around that. I don't know too much more about that, so I'm not even going to keep covering that. Anyway, um, do you want to talk about your thing real quick? Or... Okay, we're going to get into the topics. Is it wrong? I'll say this real quick. Okay. So for the second year in a row, um, God damn, I'm going to put an annual on it. That's what it is, and that's a second year in a row block party out Dresden know what I'm saying community day just bringing back that old feel to the drive you know what I'm saying back when I was a kid running around 
You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, we had a lot of uncles in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like, now it ain't that same love, that era. It ain't there. So, at least once a year, you know what I'm saying, we can uh, bring it back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bring that love back. Bring the feel back. Everybody see everybody. Cause, you know what that feel-good music. Get the old heads out there doing that. Yeah. Thing. And, you know, it's just a lot of us that that's artists is from Dreads. And so, it's like... You know what I'm saying? A lot of dreads and music is going to be played. You know what I'm saying? Uptown? So, I don't know. No, no, no. We ain't uptown. We midtown, bro. Like, we, we in the middle of the oh, city. Oh, no, I know where that's at. Yeah, dreads. I uh, like, 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 it's a lot of niggas from uptown. It's a lot of niggas from downtown. But there ain't too many from dreads. And we, we cut different. You know what I'm saying? Like, we real cut different. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's going to be fire. That's going to be fire. Yeah. All right, so let's get into the topics, man. Yo, everybody in the chat, what's going on, everybody, to all of our viewers? What's going on? I see T Spills in there. Uh, Latanya. T Spills. What's up, Latanya? Uh, Lois. War winning. What's going on, Lois? Wesley, I see you in there. Um, Round I table. I think that's, that's, that's your girl, right? Yeah. I don't want to mess up. Mika. You. Mika, okay. Mika, what's up, Mika? Appreciate y'all for <laughs> tuning in. I'm bad with names. I'm bad with spelling. I'm bad with pronunciation. I'm sorry. Um. All right, so we're going to get into the topic. So the first one that I have is a, is a post that I put on Facebook earlier this week. And um, it goes like this. Is it wrong for a, for your significant other to sleep over somebody's house who is of the opposite sex? So say you have a girl and she was like, yo, I want to sleep over my friend's house. He's a guy. Are you okay with that? Hell no. Are you wrong for not being okay with that? Am I wrong? Hell no, I ain't wrong for not being okay with that. Gay or not? Nah. You ain't staying over there, right? Now, do you think... Because I'm going to give you my answer too, but do you think it, is it an insecurity thing or is it a respect thing? It's a respect thing and insecurity, insecurity got nothing to do with that, like, nah, like, if I'm staying at a few my house, like, like, hell no. Shawty wouldn't go for it, correct? Yeah. So, so it, I ain't, it, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it, we're not going to go for it. Just because she ain't going for it, that don't mean I ain't going for it, but she ain't going for it. Yeah. Like, hell no, like it's you different my because, girl. Like, what do you mean spend the night at another guy? But house? we're also we're guys though, so guys have intentions when it comes to females, and we we want to fuck. So if we want a girl to sleep over our house, we want her to sleep over because we want to smash. Like, let's be honest. Yeah. So no, it it, it is kind of uh, it's not different at all. It's just because it, me as a guy, no. If you're if you're my girl, no, I'm not gonna be cool with you sleeping over another dude's house again. Like he said, gay or not, don't care. Yeah, don't care at all. I don't care if he is like super gay. Don't care. Just yeah, don't care. Yeah. It's a respect factor, and it has nothing to me. It has nothing to do with insecurities. It has to do all to do with respect. respect. And me as a man, and I feel like it's it's not wrong as a man to have this feeling. But when I'm with a girl, and I really fuck with a girl, and I really fuck with her like dumb hard, and I don't want to fuck with nobody else, I become in a way territorial, and there's yeah. no problem with that. Because I protect what's mine. I don't know if y'all know who Andrew Tate is, but he said it best. If you had a Lamborghini, right? And you parked it. You went to go in a restaurant. Somebody started walking up to your Lamborghini, trying to pose on it or whatever. Or trying to just look around it, like look in and shit. And you see him doing it. Are you just going to let him do it? Or are you going to walk over there and you're going to be like, yo, what are you doing? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's the same with your girl. I'm going to look at my girl like a Lamborghini, a luxury car. If I see another dude coming on to you, or I see you be talking with another dude, I'm going to get territorial like, yo, what's up? Because now, like, you're not my property, but I feel responsible for you. Facts. If that makes sense. So, and although you're a grown woman and you can make your own decisions, I still feel like you need to have enough respect for me to know that ain't it. That ain't, that ain't going. Know what I'm saying? That's just me. Yeah, in fact, I drive a Nissan, so you leave my shit, we definitely have a problem. Straight up. <laughs> no, I'm saying. Straight I drive up. a goddamn a soccer mom van, so if you walk Nissan, around my van. It is goddamn gonna be motherfucking proud. Yeah. Because I know you ain't trying to I know you ain't trying to pose up on it. That that motherfucker Nissan paid for. It paid for. I got a title. It's that motherfucking home. Yeah, I got the title from my van. Leave my shit. I got my shit for the free ski. Know what I'm saying? When in Yo, all I'm saying is if you get a free blessing in your life, take that shit. Take it. I got that car that I have for now that for free. And I have been riding it and driving it. And I'm going to keep riding it and driving it until it dies. And thank you so much to the people who gave it to me. You guys know who you are. 
I appreciate you guys for everything you guys have done for me in that time span of my life. But check this out before I lose it right on that question, okay. right? Go ahead. Your girl, if that's really your girl, like y'all got something real going on, that wouldn't even be a fucking question, a thought, or anything. I agree. So if you got a girl that would ask you that, yeah, mm. okay, so stop playing. That okay, so let me ask you this. So say it's a girl that you start talking to, but she done already been doing this. She done already been sleeping over other, this other dude's house. Well, well, this me speaking. If we talking, your other business ain't my business. Long, no, I'm saying when I come through for my business, we straight. Whatever you got going on, they ain't none of my business. No, I'm saying so. That that's me though. Like, no, I'm saying like that's me. Like whatever you got going on over there, that's you. But when you right here, you right here. I agree. That's yeah, I, I I feel like once you get to a certain point with somebody, say you you chilling with a shorty and y'all y'all chilling for a couple months and y'all be sleeping over each other's houses, y'all fucking, y'all going on dates, this that, and the other. Y'all not exclusive, but y'all think it comes to a certain point where it's like when y'all first start, I get it. It's like you really don't have control over her. You don't, you know, y'all not together. But it's like if y'all are consistently together, y'all may not have that title, but it's just like you already know what it is. No, 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 no. That that that. They're going with knowing what it is. No, we need to communicate about what's going on. And that's the problem. No, I know. I know, and I agree with that. And I, I, I agree, but that's what I'm saying. You know what it is by this time that we've already had these conversations. Clearly, if you're really fucking with somebody, you and I both know if you're really fucking with somebody, no matter how many times y'all done fucked or whatever, it, it, y'all have had deep conversations about y'all shit. And y'all get shit straight. I mean, I, I mean, me personally, I do communicate with shorties I fuck with. If I'm fucking with her... Okay. A little bit more than you know, what I'm saying just just a smash. I'm I'm gonna communicate that to her. So that, I mean, to me, that's just a given. Maybe not to everybody. But do you do that before y'all get the smash or after? You, well, it depends you know, on the relationship. Get, it depends. Now, yeah, see, now you gotta see because some girls you just fuck off first night. But like, just because you fuck first night, you still fucking with her. I mean. Like, I know that you've had a girl in your life. I'm sorry, Mika, that we talking about this, but I know that you've had a girl no, in your she life. Good, she good, she good. I know that you've had a girl in your life that there's been, that you've probably fucked first night, but you were still fucking with her heavy after. In my line of work, back in the day, <laughs> we were we just playing with that. <laughs> back in the day, in my line of work, you know what I'm saying? Um, my one night is, as uh, far as I can remember, um, it was like basically that was it. Like any woman I was dealing with, like we communicate, like yo, like yo, like what, what is it gonna be like? Especially like if I'm really like feeling it, like know what I'm saying, like so. <laughs> the comment and shit, but uh, <laughs> but not like far as one night is, is like y'all y'all don't really communicate. It just boom, you you out, you gone after that. But if you stick around with stick around with the junk, then you gotta head out communication. Like, look, like what's going on? Know what but I'm see, saying? that wasn't my question. My question was, I know, have you had a shorty that you fucked the first night that you did com- continue to actually really fuck with and actually grow a bond with and like have an actual relationship with? No. Like, cause I understand what you're saying. Like, I communicated. You know what I'm saying? Before y'all fucked. Yeah. So there hasn't been any time that you were just chilling with a shorty and it just kind of got there first night? And then after the fact, you were like, damn, I still fuck with her. Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to prolong because I can't really remember because it's been... You know what I'm saying? I get I'm it. I mean, I get it. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> my thing, anytime I approach a woman, though, it, it's like, I always be like, how you doing? I find you sexually attractive. You know what I'm saying? And we go from, and we go on from there. It's never like we just, you know what I'm saying? It's all we, we talk before we get to that okay, sex I get point. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like. So I when you really fuck with a girl, you wait. Wait what? For fucking. To fuck. Because you can't tell if you really fuck with a girl the first day, though. If I fuck with her? Yeah. Like you can tell, you can be attracted to somebody the first day, but you're not going to tell that you really fuck with her until y'all actually start building. Like, you can't just fuck with somebody and not fuck with their personality. Like, you can't just be like, man, I actually feel like I have love for this bitch. If you don't have love for her personality. Yes, you can. 
What? So you, you tell you me you fuck with Shorty and not give a fuck about her? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm you talking about personality. I that's said Karen. fucking with and fucking are two different things, though, bro. Fucking with and fucking her are two different things. When you fucking with somebody, you want to build with that person. When you fucking somebody, you just want to fuck them and duck them. Two different things, bro. Two different things. Okay, so I'm getting that chick. You're yeah, fucking with. Are you already still? You still single and it's fucking with, right? Yeah. At this point, at, at this point of the relationship, but y'all be. Like, you have a girl where you you really fuck with her. Like, you fucking with her, but you also really fuck with her on some bonding shit. Because she's just like, you know, we all have... You have a girl, so you know that there's somebody that you nah, can actually see, fuck see, with on the fucking bonding like, shit. That's like... That's... That's... That's nah. See, when, when you just fucking, you just fucking see that fucking fucking with you. Like, you getting in feelings and shit, that's a whole different bracket. When you just fucking, you just fucking. But if you fucking got feelings involved and all the other shit, that's a whole different thing. That's I know. I know that. I know that completely, but my initial question was, have you ever had a shorty where you fucked her the first night and then actually had fucking family for her after the fact? Feelings? And actually no, built no with her? No <sighs> that's rough. See, that's where I guess I'm fucking up in my life because I have had girls where I, like, fucked first night and I was, like, after the fact was, like, damn, I actually fucked with Shorty, though. But I will say... <laughs> wait, 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 that when we did get to the fucking, the fucking just meant a lot more. See, we don't do too much goddamn talking if this shit got deep. Fuck that. Once what's we hot? get, once we so, get inside so a roof and some doors. So, so what's that? What's the part that you don't like, man? You 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 you, you like that you build on with her, you fucking her. You, you know, so what's the part that you don't like? What do you mean? Like, <laughs> don't like about what though? The the chick. I mean, I just there's a lot of things about her that I don't like, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> hey, much. <laughs> he gets the pussy. He starts nah, building nah, with you, nah. and then he right. ducks you. Okay, okay, no, no, no. All right, all right, okay, 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 okay. I kind of understand what you said. Okay, okay, okay. Here's my answer to that question. When I'm first talking to a shorty, all right. So I always talk about my ex, but she's a really good example for a lot of things. When I started the first night I met her, she came and saw me on my break at my job and we chat and we sat and chatted in her car for my whole 30 minute break at the end we kissed right then later that night she came to the crib we talked some more and then we ended up fucking she spent the night then after that it was like we would just still keep building and talking and talking through text and then when we would hang out it would be a lot of talking we would get to the sex but it was a lot of talking first which I don't mind that because I like building with a shorty. Because if shorty really wants to get to know me, <laughs> wait. But if shorty really wants to get to know me, I'm gonna I, I'm with that shit. But if it's a girl that I just I'm just kind of want to smash. But when I met her, it wasn't a girl that I just wanted to smash because when we were talking, she did seem like she actually had her shit together. Like she know what she wanted to do with herself. So it's like her personality made the sex all the better. But it was like her personality is what made me want to keep sex, fucking with her. No, I'm not saying that at all. The sex was great. But I'm saying the sex isn't what made me want to keep fucking with her. It was the fact that she was just a cool girl. Okay. And it, it, she was great to talk to. And she was just like, I could tell she was a good person. Okay. The sex was just a plus. But it was like, the personality is what... But then I've had other girls now, for other examples, that I chill with them the first night. We fuck. And the pussy's good. But it's just like, I don't really feel no other connection besides that. So if I don't really feel any other connection with you besides you got some good pussy, then that's all it's about to be for me. Okay, I see. Unless you get pussy though. To me. Or oh, unless they had that conversation first. Before <laughs> <laughs> they talking first. Wait, wait. <laughs> I have learned in my life mm -hmm. after getting pussy whipped so many times from see, being a good see, guy. See, wait. There you go. <laughs> Because I, I never said once, I never said once Somebody, that I didn't, I didn't get pussy with. He said so many times that you're But I have, yeah. because so you know me, though. Times. You know me, and I, you know I genuinely have a good heart, bro. Uh -huh. I'm a good dude, like, and I, and I really I treat it. I have a good it, heart, too, but I know, I, I, but, I, but, but, but listen, <laughs> like, like, where I'm from and how I grew up and shit, like, I just handled my life and, and everything just a certain way, and I was just a true, like, I really wanted to be a true gentleman in my life, right? Because I was, I, it was a, a lot of boys and my mom. So we have one woman in our life that we all had to show mad respect to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I just 
growing up in my life wanted to treat women like queens. Like that's just when I but then I realized not all women deserve to be treated like a queen. Like some women de- deserve de- really deserve to just be treated like a dog, fuck them and duck them. Some girls deserve that, but some girls don't. But you can easily determine who deserves that and who don't just by talking to them a little bit. If you can have an intriguing conversation with a girl in the first hour of y'all talking, she's actually worth building with. But if y'all are just talking about bum shit for the first hour and you're bored and all you're thinking about is, is this, I, mean, I hope this pussy good. Fuck her and duck her. That's she can talk about something good and you could be saying the same thing. I, I'm trying to fuck I'm trying to fuck That depends fuck on the guy you are now, but that, all right, so I'm speaking for myself. I'm Forget speaking for myself. Now. I'm sorry. Did I have to say I'm speaking for myself because I know that's things you get. But it's like, that's just how I am. If I, if I can have an intriguing conversation with a girl, of course I'm always thinking of my mind sex. I love sex. I always want sex. But sometimes it's cool just having a conversation with a girl and actually learning about her or, or like her telling you an intriguing story or you guys having an, an intelligent conversation with each other. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. She tells you all the good stuff but shows you the other thing. It's how you trying to make a relationship, though. Basically, like, it's going to fall into that. That's, that's how it be a lot. Yeah, of like, you build well, it. Well, because now, it's all right, so... so both people, you know, men and like, Because whenever, all right, so now, again, I'm, I'm speaking for, for myself you, yeah, now. We everybody. get that, but we speaking from us, like like us, like... Yeah, so like, I'm, I'm speaking straight. for myself, right? Yeah. I'm speaking for myself, but if a, I personally only really like now, because there was a time in my life where I was just, I didn't really care about nothing besides just getting in it. But now I'm in a point in my life where it's like, I'd rather build with somebody before I fuck with, like, before I fuck them. Because I don't want to be just fucking any old schmo. I don't want to be fucking any pussy that everybody been in, honestly. And, like, I don't care to do that. If I see shorties popping her pussy on social media, shaking her ass, half naked, popping her titties, fucking promoting her fucking OnlyFans and Snapchat and all that, I, she's, she's just a, a regular schmo to me now. It's, it's the girls who don't do that that I be trying to fuck with. The girls who are kind of more into themselves, don't they, they'll they post on social media, but not much. And it's just like friendly photos, family-friendly photos, as I'll say. And those are the girls that I, I, I just go for. So if I'm going to be fucking a shorty, I got to fuck with her first. Now, I got to at least know she's cool. And, and if it turns out that I just want to fuck her, that she's cool with me just wanting to fuck her and be friends. And if she's not, then... We could just be friends. It's cool, whatever. But don't don't be expecting me to do shit for you. I won't. I mean, I'll be our friend. And I'll be there for moral support. I'll be there to motivate you all day. Like you want money for whatever. No. Sorry. I had this conversation earlier with Dwayne, right? And we was talking about. I was telling him how, when it comes to people in my life, if they benefit me. In, all right, so I'm going to just talk about for studio time, right? Everybody wants free studio time, right? Well, how does that benefit me giving you free studio time, right? So what I tell people is, you want to get, you want to get free studio time? Put money in my pocket. Females, put money in my pocket. Promote me. Bring people in here. Or, pop some pussy. Fuck it. You don't want to pay? Boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he just Let say me that. ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. You can say For studio it time. <laughs> I mean, he went Uncle Luke, didn't he? <laughs> and feel me out here. Two feel lab crew. How many times? Feel me out here. Two years. No, no, no. Like, I haven't had to do that much. Now. No, no, no. But now listen. Now listen. Now listen. Now listen. Just y'all have to feel me out here. Y'all have to feel me out here. Now, I'm not just gonna ask. I'm not just gonna go about this with any girl. But there's girls. Listen. Listen, mastery. <laughs> But there's girls who come in and they want to be all friendly, right? And they want to try to be cool and they want to act like your friend. And but every time they come to you, they want to also record. They want to record their own shit. But they're just like when they hit you up, I just want to chill. And let's just vibe in the studio, and like listen to music and chill and drink. And then when you get them there, and they're like, oh yeah, so I've been writing. So now at this point, you expect me to give you a free studio time, right? So at this point, now I have to think to myself. How am I gonna benefit from this if I just give you free studio time, right? I'm not gonna get no, I'm not gonna get paid from it, right? So now I have to use my time and my resources to benefit you, right? So what am I gonna get in return? Either you bring me business. Hey, I got a friend who's gonna record. All right, he records, or she records. They pay me. I'll throw you a session, or 
or if I'm attracted to you. <laughs> we gonna start <laughs> pimping Monty. I told him a long time ago we need to start pimping Monty. <laughs> I've been pushing for studio time. <laughs> God, show my. If you're an engineer and producer, and you're a good one. You better my shoes. If I tell any female artist out there, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. But, hey, um, no shame yeah. in my game, man. You know what I'm saying? You just got to be A1 with your shit. I'm very honest with my life. You know? I don't care. Y'all can know. Y'all can judge me in any way, shape, or form. I don't go out preying on girls like, hey, yeah, pop some pussy for studio time. However, if you want to sit there and you want to keep acting like my friend and you want to not and you want to keep trying to leech around me and be in the studio and try to just keep getting free studio time out of me, no, I'm going to be honest with you. A, either pay me, bring some business my way, or pop some pussy. Pop the pussy and get the vocals right. Or not you even, or not even pop some pussy shit. Let me get some head. <laughs> get the Let me get some head. Right. <laughs> Let me get some you know head. I'm, I'm just, I mean, I'm a guy though. Like, let's, let's be honest here, guys. Like, if you guys were in my position, right, and you have that leverage, and you have that skill that you know people want, Use it to your advantage when you feel like. I might be a shitty person. I might be going to hell. I don't know. But eh, sometimes I use my skills to my advantage. Eh, not a problem you with that. You are giving hit or getting hit? Getting hit. Why get would it. I want to give a girl? Okay. How no, am no, I going to get fucked up and give a girl I had check you. I, did, I, did. I mean, I don't, you know, if I, I don't even eat pussy unless I really fuck with the shorty anyway. I'm going to be, I don't be eating that. Pussy Thank you. Your, your girl, girlfriend, like, <sighs> I'm just saying, because some girls be out here, they be having a lot of weird things in their pussies, and I ain't with that shit. I'm just being real. But make sure, you said something about three minutes ago about the show you met for the night, then you kissed at the end of the night. Are you kissing all these women? No. Okay. Most of them? No. Some of them? Some of them. None of them. I'm learning that. As I get older, I'm learning that. And it's weird because, again, I'm, a, I'm an open person. When I was younger, I was just all about kissing. Like, I was always making out with girls and... Shit, it was just a thing to do when I was like 12, 13 because girls really didn't want to get touched yet, but they were cool at making out. So, I mean, I can make out with a girl, get my dick card. You were at 13, right? 14, 15, 14. 2012, I came down here. I was like, the girls was fucking. No, by the time, no, by the time I came down here, I was already fucking. I, I lost it at 14. So I was 14. I lost it to a 17 year old. Good. And, yo, I dumped her same night. G shit. Yeah. Yo, she, nah, nah, her friend was with her, found out she was fucking other dudes and all this, and we were, anyway, long story short, fucked her and dumped her. It was a good experience, though. And I lasted a lot longer than I thought I would. Because, like, the first five minutes, it was with a condom, and then that came off. And then the rest was, like, I lasted, like, another, like, solid five before coming. It was, like, a ten-minute span of fucking for my first time, bro. That's, that's not bad, dude. Come on, that's not bad. Ten minutes for your first time. I mean, she had a pretty loose goose, but I didn't know it at the time. Yeah, loose goose. I didn't know she it. She had a loose goose. <laughs> I didn't but know no. it at the time. It, it was wet though, you know. And she was she was an attractive girl, so it made it all the better. Um, but uh, yeah, I learned from that. Well, you know. Said to your touch, so then. <laughs> You was up north, New York woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in New York when that happened. New York woman, yeah, man. Yeah, oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say. When I came down here, it was, yeah, I was already in the group. But uh, I mean, because after that girl, I had like another girlfriend who I I took her virginity, so that was cool. And um, I don't do virgins. I, I almost ran into him. I was in a situation to. where I almost oh, went. Dude, I, I got can... the fuck out of there. I got the fuck Bro, out of there. I guarantee y'all, if I was still living in New York and I never moved down here. I might not be with her anymore, but I probably would have stayed with the girl I was with who I took her virginity for a long time, bro. Because one, after, even before I took her shit, Shorty was like a good girlfriend. Secondly, after I took her shit, bro, it was just all about me. And it was just like, she just, and then she became a freak, like real quick, yo. Like, she go. started sucking and fucking real fast, bro. Like, I wouldn't go. she even wanted me to go in no condom one time, bro. And I'm going to tell y'all this. I'm going to be real with y'all. I don't know what's ever happened to y'all. I went in her right for the first time without a condom. Bro, I had to pull it right out. I couldn't do it. I was about to. Well, was you about to explode yeah. right then? Bro, I yeah. put it in. I was like. This had to be. I took it right out. Like, like I was 17. I first did that shit. Went raw. 
she was like 26. That shit was, uh... What? You were said Whoa, she was... Wow. Yeah, yeah. I was wow. She was 26. The first time we did it, like, that night, we I had the condom on. Then I woke up, like, around 3. I wanted some more. I had a condom. So I only brought one. So I don't know why I was... You know what I'm saying? And, uh... Went in that bad boy. Got, like, a good six of them, and I came right back out. I said, yeah, this shit... This is a different ball game here. But I was 17, you know what I'm saying? So I'm 31 now. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be so, a different story. And it'd yeah, also yeah. be a different story when I'm fucking a lot opposed to when I'm not. When I'm not fucking a lot, I come a little bit quicker than when I'm fucking a lot. Yeah. I'm just being honest. I don't know if it's like that for everybody, but it is for me. So when you fucking a lot, you come quick? No, when I'm fucking a lot, I don't. Oh. But when I'm not fucking a lot and then yeah, I finally yeah, fuck... Yeah, that's because like, you faster. know, you know what I'm saying? You know your body yeah. produce like with three that's guys. I don't know if it's like that for a lot of like people. A, but every two days or some shit like that. So when you, you going, like your shit low, your energy low, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yo, it's funny because we're like almost 40 minutes into the podcast. We're only like one question in. <laughs> 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 All right, so I'm going to get on to the next one. So the next question is, would you fuck a girl who's 18 or fuck with a girl who's 18? If she's 18 in college, yeah. But 18 in high school, no. So what if she just graduated? No. I still look at that as high school. Like, like she's about to go to college, but she just graduated. No, she got to be f- already been in class. I got to make sure you can just probably come from class or some shit. You know what I'm saying? But at my age now, no. Um, When I was like... 25, yeah, but I feel like anything over, like, 24, 25, dealing with someone that young, even though the law say grown, but mentally, like, no. Yeah, that's that's where, you know like, saying? that's yeah. where it fucks me it, up. Yeah, and, all, and also depends, like, you just can't just, she, like, her, she has to really be, like, you know what I'm saying, up there, whatever, but. She gotta at least know her direction yeah. like cause I mean my answer to this question is like I'm 25 if she yeah if she's so like good a more like if she's 24, 25, you, you're good if she's it. more mentally like there maybe but like I aim for like you gotta at least be like 20 about to be 21 like 20 and up 20 and 21 I don't know it's just like a thing for me <laughs> You hear me? I said me at my age. <laughs> Boy, feel, feel what y'all old. Gonna do, what y'all gonna do when y'all go to the bar? To the bar? Yeah. Uh, well, I that's smoke. The thing. That's, so we in the crib. Like, that's, how you, that's where you gotta know. That, like, no, I mean, she, that's where you gotta go all the way to the crib. Right. It's about time to get in there. Shit gotta, lit. You gotta, you gotta drop your 18 off. I mean, all right, so here's an example. When I was fucking, like, what, 19, I was fucking with a girl who was 21. And... She we, yeah, she want, we we all went out and shit, and you had to be fucking 21 to get in the place, and it was a, it became a whole thing, and then, like, they were able to get me in, but I had to, like, wear a wristband and all this extra shit, and, yeah, it was, like, embarrassing, because I was, like, not 21. So I was I, 16 when I first went to a strip club. This was, uh, and, and strip was on me, too, son. Like, this one joint, she had top and bottom. She was like, I'm trying to leave with you right now, like... I'm like, I ain't, ain't got no way she, to take you. I was six. I ain't got no way to take you. You know did, what I'm saying? Did she know that, that she, she had just committed a crime, Loki? And did she know that she just became uh, a pedophile? Nigga, 16, you grown. God damn it, what? shit. I'm in there. So bro, that's bro. you saying that, that I, I, I a 16-year-old girl, you're grown. No, 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 no. I said I was 16. She, oh. she was like her dust. So no, I know, but I'm saying, no, but I'm saying you said that you were grown at 16. Damn right. So you're grown. saying that a 16-year-old is grown, so that means a female if she's 16. She's no, grown. no, that shit different. Hell no. no I see. That shit, no. Nah. Men, men, like, 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 men and women are different. Just, just like, you like. Was, you was grown or you thought you were grown? I was grown, bro. I was taking care of myself. Like, like, like my whole childhood ended for me at 13. Everything I got. To this day, I got my own cars, clothes, everything on my own. You know what I'm saying? So, I was grown. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I look at it, a 16-year-old male and a 16-year-old female, sometimes the mentality is different. And, like, the the mannerism, you know what I'm saying? Like, they more so, the, the, the testosterone level. No, I'm saying that's what it is. But look at the upbringing, too. You have to look at the upbringing. Because some kids, like you said, by 13, you had to become a man. Some kids, they could be 16-year-old and still be mama boys, daddy boys. 
Like, when I was 16, I didn't have to become a man yet. I'm yeah. being 100% with y'all. I didn't have to start living on my own and fending for myself. I mean, we, I had to fend for myself to eat sometimes. I mean, because my parents didn't feel like cooking, whatever. That's yeah, for one night. No but I didn't, exactly, yeah, I didn't have responsibility for real. Exactly, I didn't have, shit like I, had, that. <laughs> I, I think once I got a job, my parents started making me pay my cell phone bill. Right, right. And so, and that was, yeah. to me, understandable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, I just had a cell phone bill. Yeah. And that was my first responsibility. Yeah. You know, and so like, I really didn't, but I mean, I kind of learned responsibility as a young kid because of all the summers of, you know, chopping wood and seal coating and doing all that extra shit I did when I was a kid. Yeah. But like, it was just like, I didn't have to learn that responsibility for real. Like, I didn't have to learn to be responsible until I got in the real world. Mm -hmm. But it was crazy because me personally, when I got into the real world, when I was 19, I wanted to get the fuck out of my parents' house and I wanted to live on my own. And I sure the fuck did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I moved back in with them for a little bit, but then I got right back out and lived with my girlfriend for a month, for a year and, a, and some change. And then we split and then I, I moved back in with them. I live with them now. But I live with them and help them pay bills now. Oh, I'm saying. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Because now I'm... Exactly. And now... You're grown. You know exactly. I'm yeah. grown now and I know what it is. It's like I know responsibility in life. I yeah. lived on my own. I had to pay bills. And to me, I don't feel You're comfortable... Growing. Growing. I don't even feel comfortable living in a place where I don't have responsibility to help pay. Yeah, definitely. Like, if you got to pay to be here, so do I. Yeah. And vice versa. That goes for anything. Facts. That's just like with studio time. I got to pay to be here. So do you. It's that simple. If she paying with pussy, then <laughs> how you cash that in? <laughs> hey, how you cash it's not only in? about the pussy though. It's about <laughs> hey, what can you, how can you benefit me in any way, shape, or form? Shit, bring some clients my way. Shit, I don't gotta fuck you. Just start yeah, putting some fact. money in my pocket then. Yeah, fact. if that's if you don't want to go that low in your life, shit. Cause you're the one who you're the one going low. Me, I'm just getting some pussy. Nah, I don't care less. <laughs> I'm still doing what I like to do at the end of the day. <laughs> like. So, uh, I'm, I mean, I might be a piece of shit, but it's whatever. I don't care. All right, we're going to go on to the next question. Um, okay. Good one. No, you don't fuck that. We're going to skip past that. I'm done with all that. Okay. What are your stand on the issues? We're going to get deep, guys. I'm sorry. What are your stand on the issues with the world violence and the problems across the globe right now? Um, you feel time like repeating itself. Can can the violence be tamed? Due to the mindsets and uh, uh, the people who have control of decisions of the world, no. So my next question is I'm because if, if you saw this. what happened in North Carolina, the entire police force quit because. I saw. A new manager was black, right? You know, you see that? That's sad. Tired. They said the entire North North Carolina police force. Do you think resigned? Cause the manager now is a black man. That's the entire. Let me say it again. The That's entire fine. police department what, 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 resigned. What, what, what city is this? In? North Carolina. That's yeah. That's a state. What, what city? Uh, I forgot what city it was, but it, that's crazy though. That's some racist shit. Uh, gotta be some Beyond, tiny, gotta be some little tiny white person where there's only like ten cops anyway. Because <laughs> you know in Hampton there's like ten cops on every block, yeah. but in some cities there's like but only yeah. a total of five cops who yeah, have yeah, due, jurisdiction of miles. But yeah, due to the mindsets and the people who have the ability of control and setting things, like with this whole. Roe versus Wade. Now women uh, can't have abortions. Like they get raped, they have to keep it. Uh, incest within the family, you got to keep it. Like, I, like, like, like that is crazy. I'm glad you brought that up. Like, it's crazy. Like this world, like I said, there's people who control it. Like it's, it's not gonna be more repeat. Like the time is repeating itself, but now I feel like time is repeating itself, but this time it's more in vain of what is able to be done. You know what I'm saying? And I think um, some some um, some people are gonna hate me for this, but I want to get my views on this whole thing, right? I don't think that it's right to take away the right of a woman's choice to have an abortion. I don't think it's right. I understand the whole you're taking away a life thing, but you have to think about like some a lot of women 
they go through the the traumas and they have you know they get raped or whatever some women they or some girls they're just young and dumb they're having unprotected sex at a young age and they make a mistake and if you don't have the opportunity to just say okay look we're gonna just wipe this clean okay we'll get it aborted we'll we have to fucking learn from this some people might hate me for that but you shouldn't take away their right to have that because some people again like they don't want to put you don't want to put a child into a shitty situation either because if it's a parent or somebody who feels like they're really not capable of taking care of a kid at that moment in their life and then going through a whole adoption process and you still have to carry the kid for the nine months and then have it so it's like the fuck kind of shit is that to me like you have to be a whole cold-hearted person and not give a start giving a fuck about your kid after nine months Oh, yeah. It's in your body and it's growing in you. The fuck? Like you, you have to be a cold-hearted person to still not give a fuck after that thing's born. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so you still, have, so you have to think about it. Like, you, you can adopt the kid or whatever, but or you're put him up for adoption, but that's not putting the kid in any better of a situation. Now the kid's adopted. You might give it a better life, but it's still an adopted kid who was given up by their parent for whatever reason. So, when that all could have just been avoided by just letting the parent make the decision to get rid of that mistake that they made and they have that option to do that i don't that's just my views on it check this out though like i did say but um i said rape and uh incest within family but uh right when that law got overturned and passed um there, there was a case i was reading up on with the lady uh, she was in the hospital right when this law had passed. Uh, she was in the hospital trying to. She she had appointment set. She was due for an uh, for an abortion because uh, her her fetus the, the baby was dying inside of her because every like every like three times a day the fetus would have seizures. You know what I'm saying? So she like she can't she don't want to bring that baby to the world and it's in there going through so much hell by having seizures throughout the day. You know what I'm saying? So right when she was scheduled, her time, whatever, I guess the law had passed like at three, we was going to say 3.58, her appointment was at four o'clock. So because it passed at 3.58, the doctors couldn't touch her. And it was like, you know what I'm saying? It's like that's prime example right there why this law is so wrong to try to control women's bodies. You know what I'm saying? Try to control the human period. You know what I'm saying? It's because you got... What you have is all these fucking... Just like with the, the chip they made, the um, oh. RFID oh. chip. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It goes in your hand and when it goes in your head, like... You have all these, crazy. like, fucking rationalist chicks and all these fucking... Uh, I can't think of the word, but all these extremists... All these fucking extremist females and feminists who are just, like, uh, fucking thinking about so much about the baby and just the life being born and that's all they care about they're not thinking about everything else that the baby has to go through after being born again these are people if they if they're even having thoughts of aborting this child it's because they don't think that it is the right time in their life to be having this child and it's not a fucking human yet like i get it's a seed that's being planted it's starting to grow but it's still not alive yet because if you take it out at this point, it's not gonna it's not gonna live. So it's not alive yet. I don't care what nobody says. It's not live until it's kicking and moving and actually has a heartbeat. You know what I'm saying? And actually has full form. That's when I feel like it's alive, when its heart started beating for real. That's when I feel like the baby's alive. So if you decide to keep it that to that long, then that means you even want you wanted that baby. I don't care what you say. But if you already know you're six weeks pregnant and you're just like, No, nah, I can't keep this, I can't keep this, I gotta give it can't keep this keep get rid of it i know that it's a life that's not going to be born but it's a life that was probably about to be born into a bad situation whether it was going to be a one parent situation or just a rough a whole just rough childhood of adoption and going through foster homes or whatever the case is or maybe a baby gets lucky and gets a good foster family but yeah i just i don't know i i think it's wrong i think it's wrong to just and then you have all all those all those women out there who just and, and people and men who are just defending it, and it's just like y'all are all a bunch of fucking idiots, and y'all are ignorant as fuck, and all y'all care about is yourselves. Honestly, that's how I feel about them. They all just care about themselves, and those people are fucking dumb. This is my opinion. I'm getting deep with it, you know what I'm saying? 
Trying to say the blind. What's good, bro? Cool, man. <laughs> Just going through these questions. No, I'm trying to get through them. No, oh, yeah. Ooh. We're getting through them, too. All right, so the next one that I have is... I, I mean, how... Like, do you stay any... Do you stay in touch with, with politics at all? Do you follow politics at all? Kind of, sort of, when it's... In, all right, well, sort. have you heard any recent controversy with Donald Trump? Yeah, they're trying to get him. How do you yeah. feel about Trump right now, bro? After um, everything that you've heard and everything that's going on with him. Pretty much, he's trying to overthrow From him, the beginning to the end, uh, I really don't have any animosity towards him. Um, because if you kind of look, he kind of did some things that helped, you know what I'm saying, our culture. Like, uh, one thing I, I didn't agree with when Obama was in there was this whole... Uh, Health insurance thing that you mandatory if not they automatically deducting six hundred from you, like then it's like even with the Obamacare like it was still unaffordable. You know what I'm saying? Like and it still wasn't kind of better than other insurances that you can possibly get out here. You know what I'm saying? So it was like forcing people to to get insurance and it's like you're paying all this money and still not getting the best top service when you when needed. You know what I'm saying? So. When, when Trump came and took that away, I felt like that was that was a real good thing. And um, I, I think it was on something I had in my head too that he's done that I was that kind of helped as well. But um, I don't have as far as what's going on now. I know what him know. Um, if he make it through, he running again. Um, I don't I don't know if they'll they'll let him run anymore, but. Uh, I, yeah, I also it, don't yeah. know shit about politics. He, he's he's gonna have the right. You no, know I'm saying. He's I mean, gonna if, be if, eligible to. I'm gonna be a hundred with y'all. If Donald Trump ends up becoming our president again, dictatorship. Period. Like it's, he, it's he's gonna be eligible if you make it through. For somebody to straight up try to overrun the government and do everything that Donald Trump's been trying to do, and be able to get this far, is fucked. I look at it like this. You know what I'm saying? He went in there like shit. It's it's some it's some bullshit anyway. So I, I, and I'm a bullshit person. Before so shit, let's bullshit then. Let, I mean, before you know all the saying? politics, bro. Before all the politics, I was all for the Trump, bro. I, like Trump was dope. I thought he was fire, bro. Like I liked the fact that he was a dickhead, but he was fucking just himself, man. And then this whole fucking like he was just a businessman, bro. And he was a really good businessman. Yeah, he been himself to. the whole time. You know, know what I'm saying? saying? And I know, but it's like when you bring that into a political light, it's f- not kind of fucking up the balance of shit. Like, now you got a fucking, a dude who's talking about grabbing by the pussy as your president. He just been himself. But if you're going to have, like, just don't, I just don't think it was the right decision to put a businessman like that into power. I don't think that was the right decision because... I think that it would have been I now and I said this before he even got elected when I was younger that I thought it would be a good idea if our country had a businessman run our country but I'm talking about like a businessman like Elon Musk like somebody who's like actually serious about life Trump I just feel like he just likes to make money and fuck off in life that's just kind of like I've seen documentaries on him I know what I know about him which I'm sure I don't know everything but I just seen en- enough to know that I've seen like he just like to get rich and fuck off in life. Just like the government get rich and fuck off. So but, he came, <laughs> came in there. You know what I'm saying? I got can't say every John president. Guy. You can't say every president just got in there and fucked off, bro. I mean, I feel like Biden I'm got in there. And fucked off. He got in there. He seen with the I'm talking about with the government. Like oh. the people who set them tables, people who were able to change laws and do this and do that. All I mean, that. How do you just? How do you put a man who has no political background as a president like uh, in complete power over people who've been in senate or been in fucking congress for years like because, i don't because i'm saying type of people sit at that government table the government is more powerful than the president the president gotta yeah yeah he's got shit to them you know what i'm yeah. saying so 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 if they allow this man to be the president so that means you know what i'm saying they just like him okay you know what i'm saying Boom. i feel like the president is just the face of Congress yeah, and all that shit. Yeah, it's all it is. Like, no, I'm saying it's just there to be like, hey guys, this is what's going on. You, if I'm you gotta sign go off through, on this publicly. if you gotta go through someone, uh, go through people that's below people you, that's supposed to be get... below you. Now I'm saying, yeah. like, like, like you supposed to be the you president government, but you gotta run here. Like what? Yeah, that shit don't make sense to yeah, me. Yeah, like over and I'm sure like Korea and shit. Whatever he says goes. 
it's that simple. It's hey, <laughs> this is happening. Yeah, exactly. No, okay, you're out. Probably kills him. Whatever. That's what I mean, but that's politics, G. Uh, yeah, I just I've never really cared too much for politics because it's a very demonic, scary game to me, honestly. But I will say though, for the first time, I tuned into a presidential debate, and when they had Trump, Biden, uh, what's my man, Bernie Sanders. Uh, all of them up there, and they was going back. Oh man, bruh. I mean, I feel that, like hey, the that last shit was lit, bro. They were like, talking honestly, shit to each other. The last that couple, shit was lit. The last couple of elections, honestly, I just feel like we're just a lot of uh, media driven bullshit rallies and just a lot of just glossy right. shit that to try to get praise and that try to get I, I mean that's I feel like that's what a lot of elections are I just didn't really start really noticing the dumb shit that I started noticing when I until I got a little older and started seeing some of the ads and shit that they would be doing and just start watching some of the debates and seeing how it become like a fucking drama fest and it just become all dramatic and people cutting each other off and getting arguments and all this they extra been shit doing it's like that, come on bro no, they, they've been doing that for years it, it, it just been in a, in a classy way but now you got motherfuckers who like fuck that I'm gonna say that's what I'm saying say and so I mean that's if you're it. gonna if you're gonna let this happen to our country elect Kanye fuck it Kanye Cause, and that movie uh, with Chris Rock head of state no I'm saying it was kind of like what's going on now like you had presidents when they doing commercials talking about the other one they they really like talking shit you know what I'm saying like yeah. I just never so. really cared too much for politics cause it's just you know, it's whatever to me you know? cause it doesn't really affect my everyday life personally my personal everyday life yeah um, so I don't you still gotta you still gotta be tapped in though to kinda know what got down yeah I mean I try to stay tapped in enough but I just yeah. I don't care enough to be like super deep into conspiracies and all this extra shit but um, all right, so I'm gonna go for one more question. Let's see what we got. Let me see. This is this, 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 this the best one that we should do. All right, all right, all right. We'll talk about this one because you said you liked this question earlier. Should you feel bad for elevating above your peers? No, because you're gonna elevate past your peer. And no matter whether it's becoming famous or you're gonna elevate past your peers. But like, let me ask you, like, should you feel bad when you elevate and your peers are still stuck at the same level? Like, should you feel bad that they're not elevating with you? Or should you feel only responsible for yourself and your own self-elevation? Uh, or do you feel like you have any responsibility for the people around you's elevation? As well? No, you're only responsible for you. You know what I'm saying? You can want that for others, but if they ain't got it, then you just got to move on. I agree. You know what I'm saying? I agree. It's just like 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 prime example like if I if I was a, a stagnant type person I couldn't be around loud if I was a stagnant type person who didn't move who didn't like to get money who didn't have that drive to do things can't be around we we don't mix we don't have nothing to talk about we You're don't right. have nothing in common you know what I'm saying like if, if I come around it's it's gonna be to keep him still away from the money you know what I'm saying because this guy he don't like moving he like to come sit and hold basically hold your hostage you know what I'm saying so it was like nah. You got, you gotta. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you should feel bad for elevating above no, your no. peers because I mean, if you feel like you're you gotta elevating, elevate in life. I feel like if you're elevating above everybody else around you, then you don't need them to be around you anymore. Yeah, it's, it's that simple. It's that you've gotten past a certain point in your life that these other people are still at, and they're not figuring out how to elevate like you figured it out. Because like, not everybody is just handed shit in life. People actually work and figure shit out for themselves and figure out how to elevate above shit on their own. You know, and so. Like, you shouldn't feel bad when your friends or people who are close to you aren't elevating because they're not elevating. That's on them. Like you're saying, you yeah. got to look for yourself at the end of the day. If you're so worried about everybody else and how well everybody else is doing in life, then you really aren't doing anything in your life. And you need to start checking on that. Like, you really should start checking on that. Because Fact. being stagnant in life is just going to bring you to depression and sadness and dark holes and all these things that you don't want to be. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Start doing things that make you happy. Start just fucking, you know, getting out there and stop being stagnant. You'll be one of them motherfuckers trying to tell somebody how to do it and they ain't never done it. You know what I'm saying? Facts. You'll be one of them. Man, that's it, that, that, I can tell you, my little, you, you gotta do this and do this and that. Why don't you do it? Know what I'm saying? Yup. And so. that's, like, and that's why I, pre- I really try not to preach too much about artists and music marketing and stuff like that because, I mean, I've gotten 
when I really marketed my stuff in one year, I had like 120 something thousand streams. And that was one year of me actually marketing my music, right? That was one year. That was it. So I have nothing to show since then, as far as my streaming goes and getting streams on my music. So I really don't like to preach to people about how they should market their music or things that they should do to, you know, whatever. But I mean, I see ideas that I see work. Like I see like certain ideas work for certain people. So I shoot the idea to somebody else like, hey, you know, I saw this video on TikTok and this dude, he's blowing up off of doing this. You know, this is an idea. You should try it. Maybe just a suggestion, you know, elevate. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, I just don't like to be around stagnant people either. And that's what separated me from a lot of other people in my life. That I just, I'm a grinder. I'm a go-getter. I just, I want new. I want better. I want to keep buying new things and getting new things. And I need the money to do that. So I got to figure out how to make it. And I need to keep figuring out how to elevate my value. Elevate my price. Just elevate me as a whole person. Like, because I don't want to be at the same level. If, if you're the same person you were five years ago, you're fucked. Man, you took the words right out of my mouth. I about to say this. Man. I about to say this eight months right here and the same eight months for five years. No, you fuck just no, bro. Just said that it's crazy. Nah, bro. And and the same goes for you, bro. Like if if I felt like you was the same person you were, we wouldn't be connecting, bro. Yeah, like right. none of us are the same. If we are not the same person we were, that means you have elevated. You have risen to a different level. If you feel like you're in a better spot than you were at least five years ago. If you're in a worse spot, then that means you've dissipated and you need to get your shit together. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So, elevation is key in life, man. And if people around you aren't elevating, there's only so much that you can do to help them. You can try to give them words of motivation, but don't give your whole fucking life and energy into these people. If they're not trying to help them better themselves, don't keep trying to help them. Fuck them, then. Deadass, B. Like... Because there's people around me all the time where I'll try to give them words of motivation and they ain't doing shit about it. So I just I ain't going to keep trying. Shit. That's on you. I'm going to give you my words of motivation. If you don't do it, that's on you. But if you do it, because I have people around me who I motivated them in ways and they did it. And so I fuck with them. Like I see people all the time. I'm going to say tip being one of those people. I'm like, bro, you should try this. You should try this. And you're like, we got to do this. We, we should try this. And this motherfucker is doing it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, at least you're trying shit. We're not getting the results we want. That doesn't matter. We're trying. Yeah, you That's all that matters. You started. You started. Yeah. Is yeah. you're trying to elevate. It's and as long as you keep... Pop up the next day or the next day. Exactly. Yeah. Shit doesn't happen overnight, guys. Shit doesn't... Rome wasn't built overnight. It doesn't. How like... about Jane wasn't written overnight? <laughs> people who typically go viral are people who have some type of little, small little buzz going on anyway. And then their shit finally goes viral. It's not. It's very rare for somebody who is nobody known, like nobody knows who they are, for their shit to go viral. So the shit doesn't happen overnight. Is my point. And even if your shit do- goes viral, it doesn't mean shit. <laughs> like they could see your shit for a week and then forget who the fuck you are, or see your shit that week, one you second capitalize. And you exactly. So when you do go viral, now you gotta capitalize on the shit. What? Every prison, goddamn it, minute you about to be goddamn it. That's what I'm saying. When my oh, shit first started going people. viral, bro, I started going totally ham on the podcast. So ham to the point I got fucking blocked. I got fucking banned for a week. And I started going hard again. And lately I've been too busy. And it's hard to keep up with everything, to be honest with you guys. It's it very hard. you because you're working. I, I'm working now. Cause I was nah, they banned me cause I was smoking online. <laughs> oh damn! Yeah, that was my own fault, but can't do that on the what TikTok. Yeah, TikTok, you can't do that. I gotta get me one. I gotta get me one. I'm All telling right, you, right. man, TikTok. I mean, TikTok has been changing a lot of people's lives, and if you stay consistent with it, it changes too. I, I do. I am a firm believer of that, cause I am seeing a lot of people who, a couple months ago, they only had a couple thousand followers, and I just like the one dude. I, I just went to his page. He has like thirty five, forty thousand followers, something like that. I don't remember. It was around that around that range. But he had a lot of followers. Now I was just like, damn, bro. I remember you only had 3,000, bro. Now you're at, damn, bro. Look at you. You know? Mm-hmm. It's cool seeing people grow, too. Because yeah, I've yeah. never I've never been, like, connected enough to an app to see somebody yeah. grow before, bro. You see the growth? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see the growth. I've, just, I've never Stop been connected playing, enough man. to an app to, like... We all over the city, man. Come on. To where... Playing. I've watched like multiple creators grow from very little fan bases to very big ones. One being I am Nick D going I, f- I started following him when he had 4000 
300 followers is when I first started following him. And now he has three accounts with over a million followers on each account. And this is a dude from Virginia, like western part of Virginia, Mm -hmm. who makes great music, first of all. Second of all, is now has two two successful podcasts he does. Mm -hmm. And then his music. In a year. COVID. In a year. I watched his account go from nothing to over a million followers. Another one being Loya. Shit went viral. He capitalized. And now every couple of weeks, I see him posting new show footage of him doing shows with a lot of people in the venues and their actual venues like the stages and big shit when I started following him when he had 1,300 no 1,034 followers I remember because I remember the first song that I, I saw it had like 100,000 views and 20 something thousand likes and I f- started following him and he only had a couple thousand followers like that that amount of followers and now he's got 300 something thousand Again, in a year. 300-something thousand followers and does shows. Makes a full living off his music now. What? That's dope. So, yeah, two I'm artists. Good, yeah. Just two artists alone. And then I can't remember the other dude's name, but it's this other dude where I was following him and his shit started going up. And I, I knew it. The second I heard the melody of the song, I was like, yo, this shit's going to go up on here. I know it. Three months later, the dude has like 400-something thousand followers now. And he's like fucking... He's up there. And it's cool seeing that. Cause, yeah, definitely. Cause, that's why I'm like, TikTok is really changing people's lives and people don't understand it, bro. But these people are staying consistent and figuring it out. Once that power by machine hit up there, I it changed my life. <laughs> well, For real. All I'm saying is we started a TikTok page and started getting a lot of views in just a couple of weeks yeah. on that page. And that's where it fucks up, and that's where my page is starting to fuck up. Because when I first started going viral, I started posting more videos, and every one, like every couple of videos, would start getting a lot of views. And then I got banned, I got back, and then I started getting the so views up again. So TikTok, all I do just posting random people can just see it. You ain't gotta have a certain following like that. Or? Nah, they said it. So what happens is they send it to a certain algorithm of a small ag- algorithm of whatever followers you have. If you don't have many, then they're gonna send it to a small algorithm of. of small people pretty much you know and then if that they react well then they'll send it to a bigger algorithm of people and if they react well then they'll send it to a bigger one if they react well it's just a chain that goes like that oh, okay. so they send it to different algorithms and then if it gets into the al- algorithm that it's pretty much categorized in and it breaks out into that then it, it's the al- I was watching this whole thing on how the algorithms work bro it's fucked it's like a whole like fucking like pathway within these fucking apps bro that's like these videos go through and it's like they gotta break out of these certain they gotta keep breaking out Mm -hmm. like they gotta keep breaking out and breaking out and breaking and that's how these videos go viral it's crazy how it works bro it's just and it all has to do with reaction Mm. reaction to the video how long they watch it if they commented if they shared it did they duet it? Did they stitch it? Did they just like it? Like, cause if that, they just like it, doesn't matter. They want people to comment, share, stitch, react, look at your page. They want to go to your page. How many videos did they scroll through after going onto your page? How long were they on your page for? That's the shit that TikTok's looking at. You know, so it goes deep, man. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I mean that's that's the end of the show right there. Cause we're we're at the end. I know we are. Cause it was at 50 minutes last time I looked. That was a minute ago. Yeah. Yeah, man. Tell everybody again Dresden. where you're from, what you do, you know, anything that you want to know. It's your boy Dante Devon, man, from Dresden Drive, Virginia. Um, I got two albums out right now on all streaming platforms. The first one is called Secrets. The second one is called Like Never Before. Um, From July 29th to September 30th. I have four songs dropping on all streaming platforms. Um, make sure y'all go get that. Um, I got a project called the Devin Miles Project that um, I will be recording with A Monty um, right now. Since I've been in the studio in a very long time, um, I'm recording songs that I wrote uh, that I had just laying around. 
to kind of get that feel back, get the voice and everything back in order so it can be more so of a easy transition when we do uh work, you know what I'm saying? So um I ain't gonna give y'all too much. I just really need y'all to stay tuned. Um, I will pop up on TikTok. I'm gonna get up there. But in the meantime, you can follow me on IG at Dante Devon with the number five on the end. Uh, you can follow my fan page. If you can't get through my friend request on my Facebook page, just go to the fan page, follow that. You get the automatic notification any and every time I post. And uh, continue to support organically. Organically. Yeah. For sure. And the last thing that I have to say, man, is um, my personal opinion, one of the keys to success in life, and for me, at least, is consistency, man. No matter what it is you do in life, it doesn't matter what it is you do. As long as you're consistently doing it, you can succeed in it no matter what it is anything just consistently keep doing it and you'll succeed that's me alright guys that's all I got for you guys tonight this is A Monty on the track this has been A Chill it's just a podcast I will catch you guys later thank you a lot for being on the boards powered by Virginia Network peace powered by Virginia radio radio